Greetings and welcome to another episode of Canadian History X. At the turn of the 20th century, Canada had a racist worry over the immigration of Asian individuals. It was estimated there were 16,000 Chinese immigrants in the province of British Columbia in 1901, up from 4,350 in 1881. In addition, there were 8,000 Japanese and 5,000 South Asians. More migrants were also arriving, and the Caucasians in the province looked at these arrivals through a racist lens. Many spouted the age-old sentiment of, they're taking our jobs, and Canada had already been putting racist policies in place to stop immigration. The Chinese head tax was established in 1885 to discourage Chinese people from coming to Canada after the completion of the railway they helped build. The tax had increased from $50 per person in 1885 to enter the country to $500 by 1903. This tax would remain in place until 1923 when the Chinese Immigration Act was passed. Now before you think this was because people thought that the head tax was racist and should be gone, well, unfortunately, this new act actually prevented all Chinese immigration except for that of businessmen, clergy, educators, and students. And that act would remain in place until the 1940s. In 1887, a riot had taken place in Coal Harbour near present-day Vancouver when anti-Asian supporters started smashing the businesses and homes of the Chinese living in the community. The second, and much worse riot, would take place in 1907. Early in that year, the Grand Trunk and Pacific Railway lobbied Ottawa to let it import 11,000 Japanese workers to build its northern BC line. This was opposed by Premier Bowl of British Columbia and the Asiatic Exclusion League. The federal government refused to allow the immigration, and the Asiatic Exclusion League had actually formed only a month earlier, and it was backed by the Knights of Labour. Its members included Mayor Alexander Bethune and several city councillors. They wanted to make sure that the first city event was a big deal, and on September 7, 1907, the members of the Asiatic Exclusion League decided to march their parade to City Hall and right by Chinatown. A rally was planned at Chinatown to address issues of Asian immigration, and Major E. Brown would lead the parade as people held up signs that said things like, For a white Canada. The parade would march with 10,000 Canadian and American citizens, and there would be speakers. Several local religious leaders spoke to the crowd, calling for the exclusion of Asians from immigration and the expulsion of Asians already in Canada. Suddenly there was the sound of smashing glass. A teenager had thrown a rock through a window, and the crowd that gathered for the parade quickly turned into a mob that threw bottles and rocks at windows and attempted to destroy the homes and businesses of Chinese and Japanese residents. After hitting Chinatown, the mob went to Japantown and continued their destruction, but were pushed back by Japanese residents who had not been caught by surprise like those in Chinatown. They formed themselves together and barricaded the streets. For the next two days, rioting would occur, and there would be an attempt to burn down the Japanese school on Alexander Street. Only two dozen officers were available from the Vancouver Police Department, and as soon as the police arrested a rioter, other rioters just set them free. Mackenzie King, the Labour Minister and future Prime Minister, wrote a royal commission on the events, and $36,000 in damage was given to the injured communities, far less than what had actually been destroyed. Instead of using this event as a reason to make Canada more inclusive, the government went all in on the racism. Canada and Japan agreed to restrict the passports issued to Japanese residents coming to Canada to just 400 per year. In 1908, the provincial government passed a law that would also prevent South Asian men from voting, which also prevented them from voting in federal elections. The Canadian government then enacted a $200 head tax on South Asian immigrants and all immigrants had to take a continuous trip from India to Canada with no stops to qualify, and there were no ships that did that at the time. Until the 1940s, the yearly immigration of South Asians to Canada never exceeded 80 people. I hope you enjoyed that look at the anti-Asiatic riots of 1907 in Vancouver, and if you did, well, why not subscribe, click like, or leave a comment. You can reach me at craig at canadaehx.ca. You can find hundreds of articles on Canada's history as well as all my videos and podcast episodes at canadaehx.ca. And if you want to support the podcast, you can. Just go to patreon.com slash canadaehx. Thanks, and we'll see you again next time.